Hi, welcome back to uh, the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. We're going to continue painting some fun little paintings for the Painted Simply channel using the uh, Painted Simply uh, concepts. I have my six colors out here and also the uh, pine green color, which I've been adding uh, lately uh, this year to some of our lessons because some of our teachers have wanted to have an intermediate green. So we've added that in there. You can make it, though, if you want to with the black and yellow, a lot of yellow, a little bit of black, and a tiny bit of blue. Just make yourself a, what we call a benchmark green. This, I'm going to do a horizontal uh, painting here today. Um, just a simple one with some blossoms. It's got a little black mark on it there I'll have to cover up. I just give this a coat of uh, medium white. The hair is medium white. Didn't have any sealer on it. This is just a uh, MDF panel that I use a lot for small paintings like this. It's a new Super MDF, which is a non-toxic. It's very stable, very flat. Makes a nice uh, uh, surface to work on. Let's go right in and let's uh, start making some colors. I like to make that real light blue color. Uh, maybe sometimes I add a little bit of that red violet -y color to that. And uh, then I reach right in and grab a big old dollop of white. Let's grab some of that in there. And uh, then we'll thin this with just a little bit of extender medium here. And we'll start pushing some of this color around. I want to have some yellowy type blossoms with some uh, violets and stuff, backgrounds into it. This time violet right into some of our sky color maybe up here. So we'll go a little bit more blue right up here at the top with this, right up here, uh, maybe right up in this area. I want to put a little butterfly. I've had some requests to do some more butterflies, bees and butterflies. So that's what I'm doing is uh, several videos now that have little little butterflies and we'll do some little bees and stuff in it as well, along with some more birds and stuff. Let's just take this out and vignette this out a bit here like this. I love to do vignetted paintings. Uh, let's just take some of this yellow and a little bit of that blue and get some of that pine green right in some of that violet color there like that and let's just vignette this side of this down like this we'll bring it in this way here and let's just drop some of that color in that'll be pretty as well here and um, I like that just just draw that around right up in through here maybe some of that other green traveling up in through here some of that other blue colors and with some of that green and white right there like that that's just real pretty just to vignette these colors out i like to you know vignette is you know you try to leave 20 percent or so sometimes into the background um i'll you know that's a guideline for it i, I do a lot of vignetting in some of my dvds and lessons and i uh, i you know a little more specific with it but here we just want to just you know add leave some of the color in and and uh, leave some of the background that's the goal and then i'll, I'll just add some of the uh, the movement here stem movement and stuff to this here and uh, some darks colors here pine green a little bit more blue into that and that'll give us some nice movement here for our colors let's put a little bit of that brighter green in that break that up just a bit some nice movement around for other stuff going on here. Okay, just pretty little ones here. There we go. And just finding the movement. I'm using just a chisel to find some of this nice movement through the painting that I want to have. Sometimes I'll use my smaller brush and draw some of the movement in, and sometimes I'll do this and and you know with the bigger one sometimes I'll use the corner of the brush like this and push out like little leaf shapes like this because they make very irregular little leaves like that and I like that look I love to use the fusion brush like this uh, to push out like that to make these little leaf shapes and stuff that's quite nice here there we go let's push some of those out it just adds here, and you can soften some of them back with your finger like that. That works very nice. Now we'll go in and uh, let me just grab, uh, let's see, should we do the 8 or the 10? Let's do the 8. 8 or a 10 uh, brush here. And um, either one. And let's add, I wanted to do some kind of yellowy blossoms. So I'll take a big old dollop of the yellow. Now I've got so much green going there 
but I don't have too much space there for that. So what I'll do is just take my palette knife here and I'm just gonna push some of this green back up out of the way here. You know, and if you get an area like that, and of course you don't you don't have your whole palette, but see that'll go slightly green there, tone that in there like that. And how would you kill that green? You kill that green by going to anything that's of opposite to it. So we have two reds on there, one red violet, which will make a cool, and then one red, one naphtha red light, which would make which will kill that green that's right there, but it'll make this more toned and more uh, warm. So I can leave that green right here. As a matter of fact, I can just kill this whole area here and make a nice toned yellow real, really easy here uh, just by adding that in. It's a nice, warm, moderate, medium color toned yellow here. Just leave some of that green in there and, and push that up, up, up out of the way there with some of that yellow. And then you can come in and, and brighten that back up right in here like this. And you have just beautiful yellows again. A whole area of beautiful yellow. So a good mixer will always know where their complement is to kill a color. And if I wanted to kill the green out of that so that, that yellow stays a little bit warmer or even cooler, I could use red violet or I could use the red like I just did here, warmer color. So now I can use it. Now, of course, I'll put this in and it will go into some of these greens and it'll be kind of greenish and that's okay. But if you didn't want it to, you could just touch into a tiny bit of the the red and that would help it stay more uh you know warmer here it stay stay some more but i'm going to let it go a little green right now it's not going to hurt me at, at all in what my plans are here because i like the yellows i like the flowers to take on some of the colors around them that's how i like to paint so we'll uh, paint up this one right here like that that'll be a nice little yellow one here we'll put another little yellow back out here a little yellow maybe a little blossom or so right out there like that and we'll push in some more yellow here I love to paint little yellow blossoms like this as well bring this composition in from the opposite side as we did an earlier one with the butterfly and we'll bring this in a little differently here pull this down Maybe make a turned one there. And you see, I'm just kind of uh, kind of sketching some in here. Some, you know, I just, I, I don't know exactly always where I'm going to go with something or what it's going to do. But this kind of following uh, the flow here that I've set up. And uh, we'll just put some smaller ones out. And drop these out like that. Just little touches of that out like that that'll make a nice composition just a nice turning composition we'll put a butterfly right up here and that'll be kind of nice there are some of those little leaf shapes coming out little bits little back shapes there let's come in and uh, let's put in a maybe a little red violet and red cool little reddish center in for right now and we can pull some of that in and out of that center i like to so i'm just using mostly the corner of the brush here but i'll pull in and out of that center a little bit so we'll push that center in we'll pull sometimes i'll use my finger pushing in and out that just creates a movement of the color in and out there and we'll put a little heavier here this will be our main center of interest flower here right there and we'll put little buds out here like this little guys maybe this one will have a little bit Maybe a touch into that one. Just tap. And as they get further out, sometimes we'll, we'll turn these so that you won't see too much of the center. Uh, this one maybe will turn down. This one will maybe see a little bit of a center right here. Maybe a little bit of a center right there. And uh, it's best to have it in there if you don't know. This one will drop down. So we'll... And let's just put a little more red. And you can push that in and out. Especially that big one. Get some movement in and out. We'll just wipe our brush. We'll come back, pick up some more yellow, and push that in and out. And what I'm doing is, you know, I paint a blossom, especially a big blossom. This is the big center of interest blossom here. You know, and I'll paint them four or five times in and out like that to really set their motion. Let's uh, take a little bit of this 
more toned color here and turn this down. This will be one turning down, pulling down this way. So we'll tone it down on the sides. We'll pick up some more heavy, nice bright stuff here up into the center and just pull that thick color. I paint with really, really thick color and I'm very light with the brush. I'll drop it on like that and I'll just pull and stroke that out. Sometimes I do my strokes very planned where I'll only take it one stroke with each uh, color. For example, I may want to come back in. Let's just tone that down a little bit. Get a little red green here, a little brownish color. Tone that down and I'll very specifically pull wipe my brush a little bit and pull out there to soften that maybe touch that a little bit more and pull one and then sometimes I'll move very quickly pull in several times you know to set up the color you know to set it up heavier here like that um, several times so it's uh, I paint what the painting needs and I try like I've said in the other ones with the, that we're filming here with these little butterflies and blossoms you should watch all of those and you know it's uh, I said that, uh, you know, I try to paint each one a little different. So I try not to set up a habit or so of painting something. Each one will go a little different here. And they're fun little little paintings to do. Now, one of the things I've got to do for flow here, too, is I'm going to have a big one. So this one should be a, a medium size uh, one right here. So my size goes down here, just like it does in nature. As it heads out that stem, they'll go down in size here. So, and this is some of the adjusting that you do as an artist as you start to develop the design. You start to, you know, fix their shapes and their sizes as you paint them here. But we've got some nice, nice movement of these little flowers going back here. So that's good. Those are good. Kind of fun, you know. You'll have, you'll have some various ones here on the uh, channel that you can go practice and try. Here, let's take a little bit more green and uh, add just a few more little stems and little uh, uh, using just basically the corner and the chisel of the brush here. Um, just the idea of some stems to some of these little flowers. Push those off to soften those out. Push those colors around. That'll soften them. See? Yeah. Maybe some light yellow green out here. A little lighter little leaves. Just very playful with the color there. And uh, let's uh, see if we can keep this in camera. We'll push these yellows back up through here. Let's go grab some of our greens right back down here again here and you can take a little bit of your black and some of that pine green a little blue or a little red violet in there nice deep dark color here we'll push that in that'll add some more contrast right in that area there push that in and out sometimes I'll use that to to negative paint like a large blossom in that area or so um, you know so I may come in here and shape up like the edge of a blossom there with some of my dark color I like to do that uh, I do that in some of my books so we paint it simply I use negative painting a lot and it's something that I never used in in decorative painting because we would always never go back and paint the background or paint it in such a way but in in this painted simply we do it all the time it's a wonderful technique and something that you should uh, really start to employ in your you know in your painting because it works so very well let's just put in a few little uh, that's just a little harsh there there we go some of that nice movement down like that there we go just looking at the mold. Notice how I'm building and building and building the painting in these areas here. Let's go back, push a little bit of that red, and then slide right up towards our, our yellows there. We'll push these up a bit. And um, come back and put some of our lighter yellow right back in there. You can push all this stuff, you know, 
out of the way there with your knife a bit. Of course, you have a bigger palette. And I like to do this. They'll work it kind of small where I can slide up, pick up some yellow, or tone it and pick up some green and that with that uh, red there. I said yellow, but I meant red. Red and the green. And see how that tones that down? That, you know, those together can make you a nice tone, darker, softer yellow that you may want to, you know, come out here and build a shadow edge or something like that onto that blossom. They're, they're beautiful tones. See the beautiful tone that's here with these colors here. Little golden tones. And it goes so well in your painting because, you know, it's made from all the things in your painting here. And you're keeping your palette limited. And these tones just are so pretty. That's the beauty of painting with the limited palette like that. Let's just take and put a little calyx idea right there on that flower. There we go. Okay, now we'll warm that up. Let's go back and let's pick up some, some more yellow. And let's just start to shape and get the feel here for this little blossom. I can put little edges of the yellow out like this and pull out and shape that little blossom here. I love to leave the, some of that red in there. I'm going to do that. Um, we can go to white. Now white is a little bit dangerous of a color because it's so opaque. So we want to model that up with some of our yellow and we want to use it kind of reserved. Don't stroke too many times. Kind of be a little bit planned with your application of the light color here because you can opaque your painting so very very quickly um, and if you stroke it too much it'll all become the same so be very planned with this look for the light edges maybe put out a little light edge and pull back a little bit but be kind of reserved here you know be planned take your watch your plan and, and approach it kind of slowly here and if you get too much of something on there, you can always take a color and lift that light back out. But if you get too much of this light, you'll flatten your painting. So be kind of careful with that. Doesn't need, doesn't take too much uh, of the light color to really make the painting. A lot of paintings are painted with darks. But, uh, you know, so many people jump immediately to the light and it's not really all that necessary to get too light too quickly. Let's keep that nice bright color in with that here. And let's just get some of that light there. See I'm using it very reserved like the chisel. I'm just kind of drawing that around here. Pushing it out a bit. Pushing it out of that dark. That's pretty. Here pushing it out. Just a little bit of that light up here on that one. Maybe a little chisel edge of it here will make that petal turn. Make this flower turn just a bit. Push in and out that red of that center so you get that motion there. Kind of like that. Let's push that light here. So I'll go out and work out and I'll come back and work my blossom here again. Let's work some of that toned color out here. And sometimes I just push it out like that. I use the brush and just push it back out like that. I, so I don't get as many strokes. I like to paint stuff, you know, for me so many years, I, there's times when I stroke, 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 and here I'm pushing my brush around a lot to get some different looks, you know, and it's, and it's like I said in the other videos, which we have several of them, you know, coming uh, you know, onto the Painted Simply channel for painting uh, these types of blossoms and flowers and butterflies, and, uh, you know, I try to paint all of the flowers a little different, so... I try not to make one look exactly like the other. I try to make them look like they're the same type of flower, but their petals are going to turn different and things are going to happen different with each one of them. So and that's what's going to make your painting, you know, beautiful. As opposed to, you know, the look of a real stiff little decorative painting. These, these little guys will be all a little different. So 
so we'll be a little careful with how we uh, how we stroke and approach our our colors so that our flowers all look a little different we'll pull some light out here Maybe give a light little petal edge there. Pull that right back in here, like that. So that's a nice little turned, you know, flower here. Pulling in, nice little turned edge there. Nice little turned one. Maybe a little chisel edge here. This one, chisel edges. And that'll really, see how that really turns that one. This one will keep a little bit more toned up underneath here. So it'll be underneath this other one. So we'll keep its colors down, not so much light. Maybe a little bit light block, just a little light edge, right, like right out here or right out here a little a little bit of the light you know there and then the rest of it will pull out and tone here so it stays soft a little bit more red in there there like that okay that's good and we'll come back out pick up a little more yellow a little more white model that here and that's a little bit uh, start to get a I, I want that opacity in there but it's a little bit uh, too um, I want that opacity but it's a little bit too much for me and so I just take my finger and I drag it like this and I love that to look for this type of color movement here see and even with that where that drags back and forth like that and I'm, I'm getting good movement then so I see I'll, I'll, I'll come in from the edge like that and Wipe your finger, make sure you clean your finger here. And so I'm looking for that nice movement back and forth like that. Then I'll just come back in and reset a little bit of that right from the edge. Don't stroke the whole petal, just like the tips of it back in and out there. And that'll help it look like it's got some transparency or translucency to it there. You can build the edge a little bit heavier color here. It's got some good movement to it without it being super opaque here, which is what you want to have on these center uh, flowers here. There we go. Like that. And like that. So we'll, we'll just reset that just a little. That's that's pretty nice here. There we go. So I end up doing these sometimes like this several times to get the, the look and the movement that I want these flowers to have, especially into my center of interest ones here. I will do it several times. Let's grab a little bit cooler color Drop that right in there. That's nice. So you can see it's got a lot of stuff onto that one. There, let's put a little yellow back in my brush. And let's just grab a little edge. Sometimes I'll use just a corner to really kind of uh, play that corner of the brush here. To get that petal exactly the way I want it. Using just a corner here. Nice light. Get that movement in and out. Nice heavy yellow. That looks good here. I like a little bit of that green coming through there, but not too much. A little bit of that green, but not too much. A little of that green just helps you keep that look of transparency there. Okay, and uh, let's build just a little more stroke here and there to that. 
We'll add just a bit of our darker calyx there. You can do a light green, uh, you know, if you can't, you know, you can do keep it dark and be very playful with that, or you can come up right up here like this and push in, pick up a little bit, and do a, a light green like stem and calyx in there. Light greens up in through here will add quite a bit as well. And some light green movement out through your through your painting here. Beautiful bright light greens. And that's the one thing that you got to remember that a lot of painters forget about is to vary some of their greens between your light yellow greens and your, your darker greens. And they don't always vary their greens enough. So we like to really make sure we get some of that variation in there. Let's get a little more dark right in here of our reds. A little more dark there. We'll take the corner with some of our yellow. Here, I want that heavy corner right in there. And you can put red centers on these and stuff. But a lot of the flowers, little blossoms, I love the shiny, bright, little yellowy centers in them. And so I start heaviest right where I want it. Then I just start to tap out like that. So I'll start heavy. I want it heavy right in there. Just tap out a little bit. Like that, like that. Just tap in a little bit right there and just tap out a little bit. We'll keep this one a little bit more toned because it's down a little underneath there. We love that drop of color. We can even put like a little bit of green uh, brighter green leaf right there over that edge or even a darker one there push that one back push you can do negative painting with some of those darks and shape up uh, some of these edges and corners and everything into your flowers so you can use those to push in or open up a little area or drop some definition between the petals like right here you can drop in some dark green drop in a little uh, edge definition there between the petals here's a little straight so maybe I'll drop in just a little bit there I like to do that sometimes it just puts a little bit of that uh, edge there and let's just drop in a little calyx there that's good let's put the calyx back up on top of this one there we go like that that's pretty nice let's uh, take just a little bit of our yellow tiny bit of our white yellow and white and uh, add a little bit of a light just a little touch of that and if you get too much or something you can always come back the other way with your reds like this. I like that little red. And tap some of that back out with that red as well. Red and red violet and push some of that yellow right out of the way. There. You know, your job is to just get a nice center look there. You know, you want that just a bit heavier there. That's but again, you don't want to play around too much. You want to keep this casual look to it. And that's what we want to capture. That real spontaneous, fast painting, casual look to it. Just with the corner like this. Okay. That's good. Now, let's drop in a butterfly here. I love my white little butterflies that I do. White and black ones. I love those little, those little guys. Let's put one in here. And... Uh, Let's put him in coming in right at this angle here. So we'll just drop a, a nice light color in right here. This is his back wing or his inside wing, which the inside wing I like to make very light here. And we'll drop. That's going to be his wing there. So I imagine him first I paint this inside wing and I it's going to have two little parts, a little curved area there. So that 
that'll paint that inside wing there. Then we'll gray down here. A little violet green here, a little blue. Let's just grab some of these colors and drop them in together here. And we'll gray this color down here. And let's let's drop him in this angle here now. This way. So this one will stay very flat here. There we go. Just like that. And this will come down. This will be his second wing here on this side. So each wing has two parts. There we go. Like that and like that. Let's take a little bit of that gray right in here. Just stroke a little bit of that into that. But I want to keep that inside of that very light very heavy with the light like that that's nice sometimes i'll blur that just a bit make that recede on him so let's put um just like a little bit of a light edge right here pull that back in sometimes i'll do that just pull out a bit that gives just a bit of movement to that gray side. Yeah, just a little movement there. And you can use that light edge there to accentuate. Sometimes I do it with, with uh, the last couple paintings, I've done it with dark. Sometimes I'll do it like that with the light, the light of the, the butterfly as well on that edge of that wing. So we can take that little bit of dark there and push that in here like that. Save that side. How about this one? There we go. Like that. Now let's uh, take our smaller round and some black. Let's not use complete black. We'll gray it down just a bit here. We'll gray right into that. And uh, we'll put the little tips to this one out here, like that. I love these little black and white butterflies. And I think they can go on just about any painting, these little guys. Put that little tip on that one. We'll just drop that one in there like that. Grade it down just a bit there. Maybe a little touch or so in here for their other little spots that they'll have. Because they'll have other little spots. Sometimes that white's so thick it doesn't lay out, so you just kind of wiggle and push it out of the way. Set that in. And there, like that. That's kind of nice. Sometimes you can. You will vein them up a little bit or add a little bit of movement. It all depends on how much you want to, you know, add into your butterfly. Sometimes I'll put a little shadow movement down this edge here. Kind of like that. And uh, again, it's, you know, you want to paint. I want to paint casual. I want to capture them casual here. So let's put just a little head there to them little body there got that a little dark so I'm just going to touch a little gray into that and that little gray will help soften him out just a bit and you can give him um, just with the point of it some ideas of some little legs coming down here just the point of the brush you can give it the idea of little feelers there The little feelers there just like that and you can use that white on the tip just to come through and set up any kind of little shines or anything like that or let's uh, take a little bit of that gray and soften down his head just a bit I don't like to make their heads and I got that a little round I don't like to make them exactly round round I don't like that to uh, feel into that. And um, let's take a little bit of that light 
blue, maybe a violety color into our brush here. Got some heavy green in there. Got to get rid of that. Some light violety color here. And let's just splash some more of that around. Just to put some other little color out through there. Right into that area. I like to really have a nice dose of light. And I like to do, uh, lately I've liked to do this kind of stuff. Fracture it up a bit, you know. Get some other little movements and other little colors going on. Stuff back up through there like that. So you just get more stuff. So it just doesn't stop on something here. It fractures and goes up into some other little stuff going on out here. I've been doing that a lot lately and I kind of like it. So we'll just kind of let that just go up like that, stop out there like that. And um, take a little bit more of that violety green and just push that out through here. Let's push some of that right out through here. There we go. Maybe uh and you do it quick. Don't 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 get too thought, you know, you know, caught up into the thought of everything in there. Do it kind of quick. You know, I always tell my students, which is kind of funny, it's just like act like dinner's ready and you gotta go. I mean that's what you gotta do. Act like dinner's ready and you got to go, go, go with these last little strokes. And that's what really lightens and gives power and energy to the painting. And, uh, you know, you don't want to sit there and think about it too much or else it will get stiff, you know. So just act like you got to go. And uh, get these last little bits on here. And last little color movements and little strokes and little bits of energy into your painting and it'll, it'll work great it'll work look good and look great and look casual okay hope you enjoy that i had a great time painting with you look for more of our dvds uh educational dvds if you like this vignette look i have a lot of different uh, dvds that have that vignette look on it birds and everything else with that okay if not there's a lot of these uh, youtube educational videos and uh, i hope you enjoy them and i'll look forward to painting with you again here on our YouTube channel. You take care. Have a great and creative day. Paint it quick with power. See you later. Bye-bye.